Welcome to Sonsa Games, the place to find new strategy games, and today we're going to play Encased, a sci-fi post-apocalyptic RPG. And I have a pretty cool background story for my characters I want to share with you, so let's just go so I can talk to you about it. You remember how it all started. The year was 1971. The dome was discovered in a remote desert, a gigantic structure of unknown origin. Then, the leading world powers founded the Cronus Corporation with the purpose of researching it. Scientists and other experts were transported inside the dome from Crystal Sands, a city built at its foot. The Spire Station was also built at the top of the mysterious formation, and all the goods and personnel were moving through it to reach the lands beneath the dome. Cronus promised the flourishing of the civilization in its advertising materials, teleportation technology, flying cars, wow. new power sources, the cure for all diseases, maybe even eternal life. Who knows? Sign me up. We thought it's our golden ticket. We thought these hospitality open doors led us to the greatest treasury in the universe. And although it was impossible to leave the dome, this subtle warning didn't stop us. Seriously? Our faith in the better future made us blind. We were looking for new technologies and found millions of strange mechanisms we didn't know how to use. We were searching for immortality, but we lost so many lives. We let the genie out of the bottle and we had no idea what it will take in exchange for fulfilling our wishes. We were delusional, not seeing the big picture. In September 1976, the day you were delivered from Spire to Magellan Station, the delusions were never stronger. Ooh. Alright, so I promised you a story for my character. So, in my test game, I placed as the Orange Wing, which are like former criminals, I guess, and everybody's super mean to them, so we're not doing that. Instead, we are going to be playing as a woman in the Silver Wing. So let, let me read to you about wings, actually. So the orange wing is like, then you have the white wing, which is the, like, uh, scientists. Launching a new era of science, we represent the best minds of humanity. So we are not a very smart woman, okay? Like, we are very rich, and our brother is, like, super awesome. He did everything our father wanted him to do, so he's going to inherit the empire that my father owns, because that's what I've decided. But we are not very good at that. So instead, we are kind of not smart, and we are mostly focusing on weapons. But, um... Yeah, because that's the only thing our brother is bad at, so that's what we are focusing on, of course. Let's read about Blue Wing. The dome lay dormant for centuries and came to life only with the arrival of people. Today, this region is a gigantic construction site with thousands of carts, snow white cities, and a network of motorways spanning the inhospitable desert. And is rightfully proud of its infrastructure. Yeah, we are not meant for this. Now, Silver Wing. Okay, so we'll read that in, in the end. Let's first read the Black Wing. So, this is like the fighters, and this is where we wanted to go, but our father was like, no. You are not a fighter. So now we had to join the Silver Wing, which I kind of like the best. The time when the first party out of a thousand, find an expert who can suss out the best solution to every problem, will equip workers with the right tools and ship the necessary materials where they need to go. Every base built and every successful expedition is a testament to the hard work and deep wisdom of Silver Wing managers. So as you can probably guess, we're going to be a pretty horrible manager, but we are going to keep this because it is what we were forced to do. Because <laughs> our father was like, no, you do not get to be a fighter in the Black Wing or something. Let's look like this, for example. <laughs> What's up with our eye? Okay, <laughs> let's change the head though. That's just weird. <laughs> no, I think... Oh, we could look like this. What is what is the hair? Yeah, let's look like that. <laughs> you can see even from our looks that we're trying very much to... You know, spite our father, who is a rich, typical rich man in, in this game. I, I just decided, okay? So, attributes. So, we are pretty good. We are. We don't have a good charisma now. We don't even have brains. Let's put that down. Deafness. Dexterity and reaction time. Okay, we're pretty good at that. Luck. Sure. We are fairly okay. Psyche. Psy abilities and resistance to a psychonic attack. That seems because I want to go on... Constitution stamina, yeah, let's put that up. Perception, no, not really. Let's just put it on into guts. Oh, let's go lower on brains and charisma. We're like really not gifted in this department. Apparently. We want perception, muscle, and guts. I don't know if we need this much dexterity. Let's put it more in muscle. Mm, or in, in guts. I like guts. Let's put it there. 
So then you can see our secondary stats here and our skills. So we are really good with light weapons. Yeah, I like that. With hand-to-hand -hand combat. Piloting, okay. So apparently we like to drive fast cars. Oh, and we're pretty good at gambling too. <laughs> I'm all into this. So if I were bad, it's, uh, our leadership is nine, which is really funny because we got that manager position, but we all know how I got it. Come on. All right, so what's really cool ability in this game is you can tag skills, which means that uh, this skill, first of all, it's going to give you extra points. So it's going to be easier for you to learn it, but also it will develop twice as fast as normal. So essentially you're saying, I'm really interested in this. I have a talent for this school. So let's still, let's still light weapons. So that's something that we're apparently not half bad at. So light weapons are tagged. And then I, I don't think we need heavy weapons. We're going to just go with the light weapons. We could do... Hand to hand combat, but I think I think we're okay with the with the light weapons. Psionics. That's interesting. Abilities of the mind often thought of as supernatural. These include the ability to make near future prediction, to sense the presence of a nearby relics, and to interact with forefathers machinery. Nah, doesn't seem like a thing. Criminal. Immortal nah. We we were given everything we ever needed, so we don't need to be criminals. <laughs> That was a very weird way to say it, but you get my point. Gambling. Card dice and other games of chance can be as dangerous to your physical well-being. Yeah, let's go. We are all in on gambling. We, we were born with money and we could... I mean, if you lost money, we would just get more. It's not a big deal. So, all in on gambling. And... What is this? A high score in this skill means you're less likely to step into a bear trap or lose your hand to a hidden laser gadget. Piloting. We're already pretty fantastic with this, so I don't think we need that. Let's put the rest in, I guess, in survival. We're not half good at it, but because it seems interesting to us. So we're like, yeah, I just want to learn this a little bit. So at the end, we have 65 in light weapons, 40 in hand turn, 55 in gambling, 35 in survival, and 40 in piloting. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, so let's go. And no unassigned things, so let's go next. And this is our summary. Yeah, I'm pretty okay with this. Our science is eight. Our leadership is nine. Our speech is ten. <laughs> We're burnt, we can't even talk. <laughs> oh, I'm a really funny person. You take the envelope handed to you. The Colonel Slogos stares up to you from it, and along with the large number one, you open the envelope. Inside, you find a foil coated postcard depicting a strange glowing mechanism. A second card serves as an official invitation. I don't want to skip the intro. Give me all the intro. We receive a second envelope. Inside is a copy of the form we filled out earlier. It took us three tries, okay, to fill out that form, but we did it. The third envelope contains another congratulatory postcard on a ticket to Crystal Sands. This is the town of Crystal Sands and explores last stop before they enter the dome. If you're wondering why as a rich girl like me is going to the dome, well, like I said, we want to prove to our father that we're good for something because our brother is just fantastic at everything and he's going to get the empire anyways and... Even my amazing skill at driving fast cars, gambling, and fighting with light weapons didn't really impress our father. So we're going to go to the dome and we're going to do something for the world. And then finally, he'll look at us and he'll say, I love you. Or something. Or something, okay? She doesn't really want to admit it. It's all in the subconscious. And when somebody asks, she just says she wants to be cool. <laughs> the authority of the committee is hardly felt here, but there's nothing strange in it. Everyone who wanted to really command and rule, they're all there, beyond the flickering edge in the sky. Michael Erwood, the smiling boy from the cover of Zeit. Six years ago, he was the talk of the town. At 20, he became co-owner of Horizon INR and took the company to the top of the arms market. Few remember him now. These days, Zeit features Kronos' staff, who makes Horizon's best look like ants. Kronos grows far too fast, outpassing all its competitors. And its management division, known as the Silver Wing, where I am, is looking to hire people just like you. High flyers raring to become the new Michael Erwin. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. There's no corporate ladder, there's an elevator. The glass doors close behind you, and the funical carriers you to the spear. A gentle wind rocks the crowded cabin. At the handrail, your view of the city is obscured by the rising heat. The funical rises on, frost whitens the window, its script pale upon the glass. The cabin heating comes down. Hey, let's look in the window. Climbing to the handrail, you peer through the frosted glass. The cabin emerges from milk-white clouds. The sunlight reflects bright upon the roof of the dome. You shield your eyes. The spire approaches. A moment, and the cabin shudders and docks. The spire. Steady white light floods the station hallways. You feel like you're in outer space or at a busy shopping mall. 
You don't go to shopping malls, we have people shopping things for us. The clerk at the desk gives you a friendly nod and passes you the fourth envelope, fourth and last. Inside you find your name tag, a permanent pass, and a magnetic chip no bigger than an aspirin. On the chip you find engraved the number 38. Caps of 38, you put the chip in the slot, the door opens. You step inside. Five others have arrived before you. You give them a wave before taking a seat. The round door closes with a dual clap. The capsule begins its descent, accelerating slowly. Okay, let's look at the other Silver Wing employee. Monty James. The silver puts one hand on his chest and with the other playfully salutes you. He nods at your name tag. Hey man. Now let's look at the Black Wing because that's what we wanted to join, but we weren't allowed. Lieutenant Elsa Olafsson. The black introduces herself. She puts a hand on the shoulder of the orange sitting beside her, and this is my first assignment. Okay, the orange wing. I was in the orange wing in the test game. I was just, it's not, not, not good to be in the orange wing, guys. <laughs> Everybody's super mean. The man in the orange jumpsuit pretends not to notice you. Eyes lowered, he studies his own wrist and the handcuffs that bind them. Okay, let's check out the female white wing employee. A young woman, her tag reads Tomoku Kimura. She catches a reflection in the glass and turns. There was an article in Suppers about like emitting minerals with changeable crystalline grids. Quietly she answers the question you didn't get the chance to ask. I'm here for them. Okay, let's greet the blue wing guy. The Russian squeezes your fingers in his own. Gesturing to the window, he points at the lattice of unfinished aqueducts standing tall and still in the sand, and he pats himself on the chest. Looks like he doesn't speak English, but he's the most friendly, it seems. Oh, yeah, I like him. He's cool. Okay, we move to the window, we look at the crippling clouds and spy a golden desert. Pretty as an adver advertisement, the drones ripple in pale waves. You think you see patterns, you squint, you were right. Gigantic concerting circles seem to stain the sand. Okay, that's pretty cool. The capsule sinks into the clouds, the silver knocks on the viewport. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, they're your, these are your last moments in our world. I advise you to enjoy them. Alright, that's the boundary, there's no going back now. I don't want to go back. The ground comes up fast, the capsule hits the breaking cushions, the door opens to the desert full with sunlight, an orange transporter stands nearby. The silver adjusts his downstreams and narrows his eyes. Attention! You are now entering Kronos territory. Mr. Potan and Miss Kimura, please follow me and pick your seats. Mr. Breezley looks uncomfortable. Elza, would you be so kind as to provide him with any because they're more humane? The orange smiles bitter as he takes a seat at the back of the transport. Near the bared window, his humane handcuffs softly shine. The vehicle begins to move. The world under the dome looks like a dream, a great and glorious dream. The transporter pulls out onto a brand new road with freshly painted yellow-white markings. The faraway horizon glows blue-silver as the light glints on the edges of the dome. Let's just sit back. I just want to move on. You make yourself comfortable and drop your gaze to the road following beneath you. Heat, sun, the wind, playing with an empty red and white stripped cup. The transport rolls over a bridge across a wide highway. Vehicles speed by below. Billboards line the road. Streetlights burn bright, even in daytime. The car turns off the street down in the underground parking lot and he opens the door, okay? And now it shall begin. Continue. The left powerful engine suddenly falls silent and the platform stops. The whole echo of voices coming from below. The lamps and the wall fixtures are buzzing quietly. The soft rumble of distant mechanism comes from behind the ventilation hatch. Yeah, yeah, we know. Alright, so we start off right here and you can try to go up or down and if you do that, you will die. You will literally die. I have tested this out in my previous game. What? Up? I went down? Dead. Just dead. You gotta go into this thing. Couldn't you get the normal ones? How am I supposed to sell this? The electric motor to stop progress the elevator, okay? So we're gonna go and we're gonna talk to Derek Axler and we're gonna fight him. Not necessarily because you need to fight him, but because... Actually, you might need to fight him, I'm not sure on that one. But because I just want to show you some fighting. The stranger bounces back and turns his flashlight on you. Herman, what the... Hey, who the hell are you? I'm gonna tell him my patience is running thin and you're starting to get angry. You need to get to the base immediately. Because we didn't get any <laughs> diplomacy or charisma. <laughs> The blue smacks and takes steps to the army. You know, I don't like you at all. You're rude and you ask a lot of questions. Too many. Sorry, but you're not leaving. Ooh, and we get to do combat. Which is great because I'm super excited for this. Okay, so. You can move around as you expect and you can hit him. Now, because depending on your sort of melee abilities, you get different sort of hit chances and crit chances. So we're going to move towards him over here. Now, let's just go straight at and attack him. I think that seems like a good idea. Oh, he evaded that. Okay, well, you have pretty low chance of hitting, but still. Now, this costs you a different amount of action points. You can see it costs me two action points to try to hit him. We could also go... Toss a metal ball to check for hidden traps. 
dig or four smash the door force the jam lever kick a malfunctioning engine to life brute force can turn any situation around i like that let's keep hitting him yeah that's all is that okay. I mean, we have to end our turn because we have normal we could try to cover but nah he can hit us all he wants we have a lot of life not too worried we put everything in guts okay so we're pretty great at uh you know just taking hits I think we're gonna keep hitting him. Do we want to hit him one more time or do we try? Yeah, let's hit him one more time and then we'll spend the points for cover. Ooh, and we just evaded his hit. Okay, not this time, but it's okay. He's almost dead. You can see it up here. It's just like nearly done. Okay, hit him again. You can do it. Again? Seriously? He learned the patterns of our movement and therefore he manages to avoid us. Also, you can save AP for the next time, which I think is quite cool. Did critical damage to bye bye now obviously we're gonna loot and take all of his stuff <laughs> yeah, we get 40 gold oh no sorry we get a uh, sheet of paper folded in for slightly worn at default seriously that's all he has come on okay how about that then Ooh, black pen looks blue most of the time but sometimes flashes with unnaturally bright colors mainly red and green it has a beneficial effect on the owner's physical conditions it gives me extra hit points and encumbrance okay i'll take that now we need to check out this electric monster powers the elevator elevator console let's use it to fix it so we can now use the elevator and move okay we got some this is now working uh, let's just keep looting around i want to get all the stuff we can get we have wooden bar, one of the most common materials. Yeah, that's not very interesting. Piece of cloth and broken scissors, sure. Wait, did, okay, I thought we didn't take the scissors, but we did. What is this? A square hatch with big latch locks. Can we open it? Duty roaster. Eh, we don't really care. Okay, let's go. Let's go back. Doesn't seem like there's anything else I could. Oh, well, let's steal this maybe. Nah. How about here? Can I get something over here? Ooh, black powder. Smoke as black powder. Keep it dry. Sure. Not sure why would we, we would need that, but look, we're taking everything, okay? Where earth metals? Oh, that seems pretty good. Duct tape and matches. Sure. Give me everything. I like the way the inventory works that you have like the shapes of things and then you kind of need to fill it up. That's pretty nice. All right, so let's use this and hopefully we won't die this time around. Okay, visitors to Magdalene Station will find a hospitable welcome in a large luminous hall. Welcome to Magdalene, B flat. Okay. And we gotta go to this guy and sign ourselves up, essentially. Hello, please come up to the desk, I'll register. A tell receptionist what you see from behind his desk with the board, how do you look? He just as impatiently for you to come closer. Noticing your silver uniform, he offers up his best artificial smile. So if you're orange, he doesn't he barely even looks at you. Welcome. My name is Dead Rayhead. It's my job to help your new employees settle in. Please take a seat while I register you. Administrator slaps himself on the forehead as if he just remembered something. I almost forgot the regulation greetings before registration. Just a second. Mm, let's let's tell him what happened. Sure. A silver interrupts you with the guest show. Let's do it in the order of procession. First we'll deal with the registration. All the rest can be discussed later. Red takes a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from under the desk, quickly runs the tape to the beginning and presses play. The speaker explodes with cracking sound over which the sound of a metronome grows louder. Solemn music begins playing from the tape recorder. The administrator's face takes on a serious expression. Dear employee, I, Administrator Dean Rayhead, welcome you under the dome on behalf of the Cronus Corporation. By joining our company, you're choosing the path of science and progress. You're among mankind's best and we ask that you live up to this title. That you deserve this title. Do your job honestly, obey the law, respect your colleagues, and and together we will build the best future for all of mankind. Let's throw a tape recorder away. We're done with the greeting. Now I'll register and upgrade your Selectron. Are you ready? Yes. No, let's ask what we should do after registration. Don't worry, my friend. As soon as we finish, finish the registration process, I'll tell you what to do next. Time is money, my friend. Keep your mind on what we're doing, please. I need you to get registered. I have plenty of money, okay? Not stressed. I mean, not here, but like at home. Because our father has all the money. <laughs> Dean's hands face above the keyboard. The administrator gives you a nod. Uh, let's uh, dictate our data to him. You spell out your first and last name, specify your ring profession, test result. The administrator's fingers fly across the keyboard as he enters your data into the current database. 
He scans the computer screen. So you're on the staff at the Magellan station. Your selection, please, I'll update the firmware. Okay. Dean presses the docking port of your pass to recess in the casing of his computer. The minister returns your selectron. So, colleague, you have the first cle level clearance, which gives you access to the archives of the administrative level, the warehouses, and to be honest, basically everywhere except the entirely classified locations. Yes, it also gives you administrative privileges at most terminals. Each new employee has several mandatory tasks to perform. I can tell you about each one briefly in detail. I'll take the short version. To make it short, get your uniform from the storage, get your weapon in the armory, complete training at the training ground, learn how to use a scanner, avoid anomalies, and obtain scientific knowledge on the white wing level. After this, return to me now, tell you what to do next. Okay, so we gotta get a uniform for the storage and weapon from the armory. That's all. I hope there won't be any other question. No more questions. Great. I'll be waiting for you. The instruction call for some welcoming words, but dash it all, that's nonsense. Welcome to Magellan. Alright, so let's kind of look around. Uh, we get such a flower pot show, let's do it. Because <laughs> this is, of course, the first thing you do when you come to your new place of employment. <laughs> you dig through the dirt in the flower pot. Oh my god, let's, let's talk to somebody. Wait, what is this? Tourette. Can I scan a Tourette? Ooh, am I even good at scanning? Probably not. Have you got technology and experience? Ooh. Let's go talk to Monty James. Would you bring me a cup of coffee? A silver wearing the thin glittering glasses sits on the orange couch, trifling nervously with his badge with the name Monty James on it. There's a pecked cup is just scoot and leaflet about the dome atop of it. Raises his hand, scans your face and scre screwing up his eyes. Oh, it's you. How do you like it inside the dome? I have expected more. You don't have to tell me. At first it was proper enthusiasm and the feeling that you make history and then you discover that you're not even on the list. I know, it's so disappointing. In this case, there are more important things to worry about than history, you know. I could try to register you with the thermal if you'd like. Are you for real? That'd be incredibly nice of you. Maybe then my illusions about this place and the people working here will be justified. The silver is super happy. Alright, so let's go find ourselves a terminal. Which is... Oh, that's a Vega drinks machine. Okay, let's let's walk around. We gotta find a terminal. It's all just the drinks. Where is a good terminal? Oh, let's go talk to this guy, see what happens. A muscular orange is poking around in the Vega vending machine with his hand in the goods issue slot. Something clatters with loud echo inside the machine. The out-of-order machine must have failed to release a purchased item. According to your job discussion, Silverwing employees are supposed to take an active part in all conflict situations in order to resolve them. <laughs> Can we resolve them with violence? Because that's the other thing we're good at. In whatever manner most benefits the company, seriously? Okay. Especially when it involves oranges. Yeah, I'm gonna interfere, like, how dare you try to hit my machine. Because destroying the machine is not beneficial for me as the company. The orange is literally disemboweling the machine, yanking out handfuls of wire throughout the distribution slot. The machine's lights flicker and die. With the satisfied grunt, the bruiser pulls several cans of soda and two cups of noodles out of the bag. I give a small cuff to get his attention. Uh, hey. So we could threaten him with a massive fine for damaging company property. Sure, let's do that. <laughs> We are so evil. The thing wearing cuts is part in a display of intense mental activity. But what did I do? I didn't do nothing. I didn't even break it. It was like that when I got here. All croaked up and destroyed. So I was like, I'll oh, just fix it up. What the hell, right? No, I just wanna... I just wanna be mean. <laughs> Ah, oh, sorry, man. He gives the machine one last kick and goes to make himself comfortable on the couch in the corner of the hall. So can I now take the stuff from here? No, okay. So let's see. The tray table is thick with spilled soda. Okay, we don't care. So let's. Where is the terminal? TV set. I don't want a TV set. I need the terminal. Washing machine. Oh, let's try to go to the surveillance room. Maybe there's a terminal over there. We could use to help out that guy. We'll talk to this person. Sure, let's do it. A black wing employee salutes you. Inver Kapoor, security service. Sorry to bother you, but we have a problem. After making sure you're listening, he continues. The fourth camera in the video surveillance room lost signal. I've already called the technicians on the radio, but they're taking their time. Could you take a look and see what's wrong with the equipment? I'd be very grateful. Uh, yeah, let's tell them about the orange stealing drinks from the vending machine. Again, thank you for letting me know. I'll take action presently. Oh, all one, theft from a vending machine. Some, send people to escort the suspect. Oh man, how could that? I'm also excited. 
<laughs> As we are leaving, you see two guys in black uniform shoving an orange into the elevator. The orange is cursing Rackles. It seems like the law is much more efficient inside a dome than in the outside world. Wow. <laughs> I hope he doesn't end up in a very bad position. Uh, I can't use it. I thought... Okay, let's go talk to him again. Tell him we'll help him out because I need to get there. Okay, well, I'll help you. Just let me go into the surveillance room. Okay, and now we gotta work on the terminal for that buddy that we have. Let's talk to this person. A pale thin woman with a cigarette greets you without offering her hand. You look down at her badge. Courtney Rosma Surveillance Services. Let's say we are a stripper. She glances at me. Then you should have a look at the terminal. Okay. Let's look at the monitors of the surveillance system. We realize right away that the problem is serious. There's no signal at all from the fourth camera. Courtney hovers over your shoulder, engulfing you in the stench of all tobacco. This happened before. The video surveillance cards installed on the mainframe burned out a couple times. Another time the cleaner pulled out the virus, but maybe I messed up something in the program. I just pressed here and everything disappeared. Well, we don't really have enough perception, so yeah. Just gonna check it out ourselves. Uh, okay, mainframe use terminal. Sure. Let me use the monitors. Let's look at the fourth monitor. There's nothing, no signal. Look for the failure course in the surveillance terminal. Sure. Terminal and software working properly seems to not to be a software problem after all, but the breakdown cause is either in the signal cables or in the mainframe. Okay, can I use some of the other terminals? Yeah. I want to register that guy. Hello, employee. Please enter the command to select the desired option. To read, oh, we can only read logs. Okay, how about if we log out? I use this one. Just denied. Yeah, the, I don't. I don't know how to register. And that's the problem. All right, it's all right. Though. Let's search this the cabinets, and we get. We keep getting dust and springs. Let's just take off. All right, let's go talk to this guy. Tell him that the problem is not with the software. Maybe that will make him happy. Oh, I can't tell him that? Okay, well. Elevator for oranges, no restroom. We don't really want to go there. Washing machine. Oh, we can use a washing machine. That's kind of cool. But it's a broken public terminal. Sure, let's try to use that. Doesn't contain any useful data. All right. What else do we got? Nothing here, it seems. We could move to the elevator, but I just want to kind of look around first. What about the monitors? Hmm. What is this? An amazing excursion of fabulous golden sands of the dome. Yeah, let's go talk to this person. The girl has a shiny badge reading Latia Rivera's on her chest and a stack of glossy leaves that's under her arm. Another stack of leaves that's laying in a nearby armchair. The silver pieces back and forth on the shiny polished forward and recite this charismatically a memorized promotional speech consisting of several dull cliches. As soon as the upwards, the woman sprints over and hands you a leaflet. Take a leaflet, the dome is your new home. An exciting read for the whole family. Let's take the leaflet. Sure. Take a couple for your friends, no? Well, no matter. Yeah, let's make her happy. Can we use that term? I just want to know how to register that guy. Ooh, yes, register Monty James. Do it, do it. As you feed Monty James data into the system, you notice that the registration form of the for the servers looks too detailed. Obviously, the kernel sees its manager as a special case. Okay, the data enters and check you press the send button. With the leave, the system redirects you to the terminal main menu. Uh, let's log in as a user. Can we do anything interesting? We could look at stats, news, email. Oh, let's log in as an admin. Uh -huh. And we could, oh, let's enter classified. Jerry executed, flashes on the screen and vanishes to be replaced by a message lock. I assigned the task and after two days, I still have no data on the scope of the event. Neither do I have a report from the medical staff. Warhol. My fault, Mr. Kingley. The reports aren't ready yet, but the GP provided some curious information. This may not be the first time expedition members have exhibited these symptoms. The rain? Yes, Sorovsky calls it the halo eye. We're still researching the psychological effects, but some of them have already been recorded. We should an examination of all employees if until the end of the week. Ooh, that's interesting. So let's go back. Let's leave. 
And we're gonna tell Monty that you've got him covered. Come on, Monty. I did it for you. Are you happy now? I've added you to the list. Monty takes off his glasses and puts them on the couch cushion and all of a sudden he hugs you. Ooh. Thank you for such fabulous example of cooperation with a stranger. Perhaps the dome really is a special place. All right, man. That's great. All right, so I think that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you'd like me to continue this game. And you can click on the right bottom to watch Dead Monarchy. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.